Welcome to the uh, Two Honks podcast, where uh, two birds of a feather honk together. Uh, my name's Joe Little, and to uh, directly in front of me is my my good friend Lamar Costin. How you doing today, Lamar? Doing great. You doing good? Yeah, good to be here. How was your week? Happy to be here. Have a good week. It's pretty good. Yeah, nothing yeah. of note really. Yeah, just another another week. Yeah, just waiting to get back to the pod. Tell tell the people what's up. How, yeah. What's real? Tell the people what's going on. Yeah, what's good? Well, I mean, I think uh, I don't I don't know what order we're releasing this in. If this is going to be the first one out or not, but we're we're sitting on a on a release here. We're gonna we're making it's gonna happen now. We're actually gonna we're actually gonna do it. We're gonna do it. Yeah, we got the official name. We're the Two Honks Podcast. Two honks. Couple of honks, just getting down. Yep. How do you feel about it? Are you excited? I'm excited to, to actually release uh, release it for the viewers. Yeah. Or the listeners so that we can uh, get our s- stupendously magnificent voices <laughs> out there, but also to s- maybe start getting some feedback from people. And Yeah, exactly. <coughs> be, yeah, it'll be exciting. Because really the big thing is, I mean, so far... So far, you know, we've just, like, kind of talked about whatever the fuck we want to talk about. But, you know, yeah. eventually, you're going to have to engage with an audience, right? I think it's, it's like playing music on stage. It's, yeah. like, it's kind of like one thing to just be doing a one-way thing. But yeah, it's definitely cooler to have a little feedback or get some guests on who maybe you heard an episode or whatever. And they can yeah share their cramp sandwich or yeah exactly talk about something, you know. like Or the last time they did cramp sandwich. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited for it. No, yeah, I'm be excited good. for it too. We got all kinds of fresh content coming at you on IG. Yeah, TikTok. Uh, yeah, we got to figure out TikTok. Yeah, maybe we should try and make a TikTok tonight. Like what? We'll we'll get the talk going. Yeah, ticket. We do something stupid on TikTok. Yeah, I think I that's know. what that's what people do. Yeah, but if anybody wants to teach us TikTok and is listening to this, you can go ahead and teach us TikTok too. Yeah, TikTok too. Yeah, we're just a couple of guys in our thirties <laughs> don't understand how to use uh, TikTok, but you know, that's a yeah. conversation for another day. That is what it is. Yeah. So, but uh, so we're actually going to have Charlie on this uh, week. The word is that Charlie's on the horn and waiting. He's going to be on the horn. Yeah, he's waiting. I gave him. I gave him a warning a while ago. We got. Yeah, you know, we got some time. We got a little bit of time, but. Yeah, so yeah. I don't know. Last last episode, we we kind of went on a little bit of a tirade about the Sasquatch. Yeah, that that really only happened because I bought some some chips that had a Sasquatch label on it that I didn't even open. I just looked at it and then we started talking about it for like an hour. Yeah, um, but I did a little bit of research on that, and it it looks to me as though the the term Sasquatch is not actually a derogatory term that was invented to make to ostracize them further. Yeah. That it may actually be a term that has something to do with the whereabouts of where the Sasquatch was first spotted. Um, really? And there's some history there with uh, Native American um, peoples that, yeah, that wasn't saw it, him um, as well. Wasn't it all like uh, Vancouver, BC area? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, and there there were several accounts that were pretty uh, convincing, I guess, of, of some kind of a creature that was hairy and tall yeah uh they said that it, it was like more muscular more muscled yeah than than like uh you know a normal man would be but maybe like six one so not oh, too okay. not too outrageous of a, of a height necessarily but they did say the foot was like the footprints they found were significantly longer but skinny yeah so it wasn't like a, a giant the first time it was spotted then <coughs> I don't think it was a. I don't think they saw it as a giant. Well, I think it was. They they, they th- thought it was a giant, but it wasn't like, it wasn't like a gorilla. You know, it was like a skinny, tall, yeah, hairy person. But I don't know. And like, I, so I found that article. I think I sent you. We'll we'll post that up here once yeah. we get this stuff going. But they basically uh, said there were several accounts from you know going way back in the history of people seeing these this tribe of people and apparently they're like like we were saying it's not just one bigfoot Uh uh-huh that's the derogatory term i guess would be a person has a big uh foot it's called bigfoot (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. that's derogatory okay Uh, the sasquatch people maybe we maybe that's a better way to say it yeah i like the long hair society but 
Maybe that's more better as a band yeah, name. Yeah, I mean, maybe Long Hair Society is like a, a derogatory. Man. I guess so. We did it. I don't know. Yeah. We turned in everything we feared <coughs> and hated. Yeah, exactly. <coughs> but yeah, they're apparently they they live in like underground a lot of the time and like in tunnels and stuff. So yeah, that's what the word is. And they're presumably still out there. Yeah, still living. So, gosh, I just re- I wish I remember the the name of the documentary, but it's pretty convincing. Hmm. Like he like saw their like faces and stuff. Oh really? And the guy's got like footage of like him camping in some random spot in the Pacific Northwest. And he's like having he's having rocks thrown at him and you can see like shadows in the background that are obviously not people. Like yeah. they, they have very, very long arms oh, okay. and are launching rocks like very far distances. Like not like a not like enormous or anything, but like I'm talking like seven or eight feet tall. Like, oh, okay. Like they're much bigger than people. Here's an idea. Now I'm going to bring Baywatch up again because I, I've been watching that show. Okay. And I, there's a guy named Jorge Gonzalez that's on ep- episode four, I think, of season four. Yeah. He has gigantism, just like uh, Andre the Giant. And he's, okay. I think he's seven foot something. And he, he's a hairy dude. Yeah. So I just, I got to thinking uh, when I was watching that episode, this, and this happened like right after our episode that we talked about. Yeah. The Sasquatch people. And, you know, what if, is it possible that maybe it's a, just a genetic thing like that, that this tribe all has gigantism. Those people don't live very long. Like I looked up Jorge Gonzalez. He was on that episode in like 93, I think he died like a year later at like 37 or something. Damn. Those people don't live very long because of yeah. the tremendous, uh, I think he died of heart failure. There's all kinds of, because of the size of them, there's like all kinds of health problems they have. Mm-hmm. But I wonder if if the Sasquatch people might just, just be people with gigantism that ha- that runs in their family. And it's yeah, like, yeah. because they've been ostracized, maybe that's uh, another part of it too. Yeah. I don't know. No, I mean, that would make sense. It's another, another light to shine on the situation. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. We don't have to go into that all, all in detail, but I just kind of yeah, wanted to exactly. brush up on that. So I don't know. It, I actually asked a, a coworker of mine who's also fairly hairy yeah, um, about the term, and they said that it was an accurate name. So that's why I kind of looked into it. I was like, Is it offensive? I don't know. Yeah. So, yeah. Something to put that on the back burner maybe. Yeah, yeah. Think about it. No, that's very interesting. I feel like this is going to lead to a whole bunch of uh, Sasquatch research that we never... Uh, yeah, we're going to become... This is going to become a, only focused on that. Yeah, exactly. This whole podcast. I'll have to change the name. Well, we got some other segments in mind. Yeah. As well. Yeah, well, you, I was going to say, uh, yeah. I, as I was driving here today, I thought I just noticed... Uh, I guess living in Portland, we, we have like a lot of... Um, like massive pickup trucks uh, driving amongst metropolitan cars like mine, my Honda Fit. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I pass, uh, or this one passed me in the left lane. It's like the trucks that they make now are so huge, like, and they're like lifted too, but they're like, you know, like bl- big blocks. Mm-hmm. This one passed me on on the interstate on the way here, and it on the back it said Super Duty. I just thought that was so funny. Like these, these like tough guy guys like drive these huge trucks to try to like look really, you know, like masculine, right? Yeah. And they're driving around with something that says "Super Duty" on it. <laughs> super Duty. <laughs> and sometimes it's like heavy duty, and it's yeah. like not really better. But Super Duty, <laughs> Super Duty is supposed to be like even more duty. It's just like, how do you? I don't know. I was just like laughed about it. I was just like, how does uh, this, uh, how's this person take that, themselves man. seriously? <laughs> Yeah, I drive no, a Super Duty. Man, those trucks, those trucks like frustrate me. Yeah. Get, well, the thing is, the guys that are driving those trucks around Portland, the, okay, th- some of them probably live on a farm and have a purpose for that truck. Yeah. I'm not going to say every single truck owner is like this, but like a fucking lot of them, man. <laughs> yeah. A whole bunch of them just have a big truck to have a big truck. Yeah, it's very clearly. Look, I like, take up a lot of space on the road. Look at me. Yeah. It's like, but like the the big, the lifted, the wide trucks, they make sense if you're hauling heavy loads every day and you're doing work like that. Like, yeah, 
it makes sense to have that kind of truck if you are a certain kind of person. But most people that have them have them like cleaned and shined. Yeah, they're really shiny. Patinaed, right. And they got the stupid ass balls on the back of it. You got to have your truck nuts. God, You got man. to. First of all, you have to. It fucking frustrates me. That's why I yeah. love gri- driving a Kia Rio 5 and like speeding around those motherfuckers. <laughs> like if they try to cut me off, I'll just right into the other lane and then cut them off. Just Fuck you. Like, just flash your hairless armpits at them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Flashing my hairless armpits. Which we did, by the way. We didn't yeah, really, we did it. We, we could talk about that later. Maybe we'll talk about that with Charlie. Yeah, we will. But yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I was driving. Uh, I live downtown. I was driving to get on the highway um, to go to work the other day. And another one of these giant, giant trucks, they're really angular yeah. shapes, but they're like so huge um, and clearly not used to do any kind of like um, hauling at all. Yeah. They're just kind of shiny, like showing, show off, kind of like almost like. Look at how tough I am and look at how big my fucking truck is. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, but there is, there's a, a, a spot where they're doing all this construction where it merges into one lane instead of two. And there was a small, like, you know, little four cylinder car like kind of like mine um, at the, on one side. And then there was this huge truck. This happened like, you know, right, right before I turned. So I got to see them go and there was like kind of a backup in traffic there. Yeah. So their light was going, was turning red and there was a little bit of room, like one car length of room had opened up right before it merged. And the truck just like smashes on its acceler- acceleration and like go, tries to get into that spot. And the, the little car, since it's like faster, like did it, did it first and cut them <laughs> off. <laughs> And the big truck was just like, like revving its engine and stuff. And then we were all just kind of sitting there for a second because the light was still red on the other side. Yeah. So I merged in with them, and then uh, the the lane opened up again, and I was getting going right to get on the highway. And the truck like, like, like roared around them and like threw a water bottle at the car and like, hit them oh on the side. God, and then dude. instead of turning, like the little car like decided to like follow them, and then they stopped at another light, like right there. <laughs> I was just like, what the hell is going on? Like, that was totally unnecessary. Like, Fucking all ridiculous, that. man. And they're both kind of at fault there because yeah. either one of them could have let the other one in. But I've got kind of a story like that. Yeah. But it involves my own road rage. Nice. Okay. Oh, so I've, I, get, I guess I've talked about my like anger a little bit on this, like how I've, I've had little like outbursts and shit like that. Sure. Before. It's going to come out on the road. It's a good spot to do yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But there was one time, it was when I used to work at this guitar shop down in Tigard. And I lived in Guitarfish. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I, and I lived in Southeast Portland, but I was driving. It was like a late shift that I was doing. It was like seven o'clock at night. And there's like one of the guys in like a big lifted truck. Not only does this guy have a big lifted truck, he's also got that thing. That's like just an exhaust that goes out of the top of your car. Yeah. And that shit is not filtered at all. Like, he can release it, and it'll just release fucking black smoke everywhere. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't fucking know how those things are legal. <laughs> but that's a different conversation. Because that, oh my, why the fuck is that legal? I've seen that's those ridiculous. around, yeah. Those are really common in North Carolina. I've yeah. I've seen those a lot. What the, what's the point? What, what are you benefiting by having a big black cloud of smoke coming out of your car? Yeah. I don't fucking get it. I think it's to offset people that drive small cars like e- mine. Yeah. Just to kind of be like, hey, <laughs> now we're even. Now we're even. <laughs> okay, but anyway, I'm getting off track. But anyway, this guy, I'm not doing anything. I'm literally driving the speed limit in, a, in my truck that I used to have. I'm doing like, you know, 65 miles an hour on the freeway. And this guy, totally different lane. He totally could have just driven right by me. He pulls up next to me and just starts honking and honking and just, like, looking at me. And I was just like, hey, whatever, kind of waved. And then he pulls in front of me, and he releases that big black smokestack and just completely dusts my car. Oh, okay. That's kind of like a Mario Kart or something. Yeah. And it pissed me the fuck off. Did you shoot some turtle shells at him? (laughs) I didn't shoot any turtle shells at him. But I was so pissed. Yeah. And then he guns it and he just tries to race away from me. And that's when I had my stick shift truck. I just like got it up into sixth gear. And I think I ended up doing like 110 miles an hour in that <laughs> truck to catch up to him. Because he pissed me off so bad. What did, did anything come of that? So I got finally got up next to him because he slowed down. And his he didn't see me because he has this big listed truck. And I was like lower to the ground, like a small truck. Yeah. 
And I had a, a empty Jack in the Box cup, and his passenger had the window open, yeah, and his arm out the window. So I rolled down my window with my Jack in the Box cup and <laughs> threw it up into his car, yeah, and it went the fuck in. Nice. <laughs> and I didn't see what happened after that because I just immediately gunned it and got off on the next exit and just like drove around in the neighborhood for a while <laughs> and hid. <laughs> But I got back at him. Yeah. And you know what? If you didn't get it in, would you yeah. would you have felt bad if it like just flopped off the car? Well, it just, if it hit his car, I would still would have been happy. Would you have felt bad about littering if you had missed it? Because since you got it in, you technically aren't littering because you got it in someone else's yeah, yeah. property. I don't think I would actually yeah. necessarily feel bad about littering. That rubbed me the wrong way when, when the guy threw the, the thing, the truck threw it at the car because... Not only was yeah. it a toxic situation that he chose to engage in, but he also littered yeah. in the process. I'm like, either one of those things would have been. Yeah, like, yeah, no. And but then again, I was on the outside. Yeah. In, you know. Which, and I'm, with my reaction to that story, I'm not saying that was a cool thing to do. It's not cool to litter. Like, guys. yeah, yeah. I'm not saying Listeners. that was like my reaction was appropriate. <laughs> you know, like I'm Though not hilarious. saying that at all. Yeah. I'm just saying, hey, this is a really stupid thing I did one time. Yeah. You know. <laughs> well, I'm glad you got it in the window. That's yeah, yeah. That would have been. <laughs> I'm fucking really glad. I hope it hit his friend in his fucking face because the guy was a total asshole. Do you wish that it was full of something? I wait, well, it was full of ice. Oh, okay. Well, like like there was some ice in there. So, okay. but yeah, that I gave knife. it the weight that needed probably yeah. to get in there. But it was a wide open freeway, and there was an exit like right here. So I was able to like get off of the freeway before he even had a chance <clears throat> to go after me. Yeah. So I just I would like, be, drove yeah. back the other way and hung out in a neighborhood for a while. <laughs> I remember my roommates being like, why did you, why are you home so late? What were you doing? I was like, uh, <laughs> nothing. No, nothing. <laughs> yeah. No, not going to tell you that story. No trace of that. Except now the listener <laughs> of the of this podcast is going to be that yeah. that person. They're going to be like, okay, now they're going to find find you. Yeah, they're going to find us. Settle the score. <laughs> it's going to be a full, a full soda or whatever a <laughs> full soda <laughs> just dump it in and we got extra large fanta <laughs> <laughs> extra all, large all, all over me yeah yeah i would be terrified in that situation of somebody having like a glass bottle or yeah you know gun or something like that yeah because at that point you're basically like on a message board on the internet you you don't have you could be wearing a mask and that wouldn't even be unusual now since, yeah. you know, you have no identifying parts unless, you know, report it, report it to the police with a license plate. Like, they're not going to do anything. Yeah. The police don't do anything about stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So it's really just like a backstreet's brawl at that point. Like, once you get into that fight, I would be concerned that the other person actually cares less about hurting me than I do about them. Yeah. <laughs> no, Totally. Yeah, and that's, you know, that's, I feel like that's what a, a normal person thinks, and that's not in a in a fit of rage. Mm -hmm. But, like, you know, if you get worked up enough about it, you're just, you're not even going to think about that shit yeah. at all, you know? In the moment, you're just going to, like, yeah. react to it. Yeah. I thought that was, yeah, it's, it's, it's really interesting. I always say that driving is, like, a great way to practice meditating. Yeah. In the sense that you can, you get to see, like, the reactions of your actions like immediately yeah and you can like you can make everything more like comfortable for the people around you if you want to basically by giving people room mm -hmm. to come in or you can be you can let the ego take hold and like leave no room for anybody because yeah because you're like you're not really that concerned about that one car length but yeah it's something more like rooted in the ego that's like I don't want to, I've been wronged. I want to make sure I'm in the, I'm doing, I'm in the front, you know. I deserve this spot on the highway. Yeah. I'm owed this. I get to be right here on this car's tail. Yeah. You stay in your lane. And you kind of lose the humanity of like yeah. the next time you're wanting to merge. And that could be you that's saying no to yourself. Like, I'm not going to let yeah. you in. It's like, oh, well, we kind of have to wear both shoes all the time, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I don't know. I think it's it's kind of like a good meditation just to try to like be aware of those things. Yeah. That's why that one like really surprised me because I haven't seen that kind of like aggression. It was a Sunday too. It was yesterday. Yeah. And it was just like a beautiful day out. And I was like, oh, it was a lovely day. And this, this guy's just like, these guys are choosing to engage in this like ridiculous yeah. kind of like ego battle. That's probably just what they do all the time. I think so. Yeah. I was I was thinking about that as I went 
like took my exit and I went to work. More than thinking, likely. Like, that's just like the way that they like, paved dude, their when day. I'm, when I'm out on a bike, I'm not like that at all. I, yeah, I mean, when you're on a bike, you really can't be aggressive with a car because a car can just run you down. You kind of just, yeah, you, you know, have to know there. your place a little bit. Right. But like I had, I remember one time I was doing a bike ride on 4th of July from, it was from our old house on Houghton up to Aunt Sarah's place for 4th of July. Yeah. And, um, when I got like into Vancouver, I was like two blocks away from her place. I was stopped at a light and some guy rolls down his truck window and just goes, those pants crush your party boys. Cause I was wearing like jeans that are tighter, you know, uh-huh. if you wear tighter jeans that are more high up to your crotch, it's easier to pedal a bike. You know, that's why yeah. I was wearing them and I just, I didn't do anything. What is that? You know, your party boys? Your party boy. I think you just say my nuts. Oh, know. I've never heard that term. Party boys. Yeah, I've never That's heard that either. That's kind of a cool either. word. Oh, cool, yeah. cool phrasing. I mean, <laughs> I'm glad you think they're party boys. I, I yeah. hope my nuts are party boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're not just like... What, what better things to be? Staying home, drinking Four Locos. <laughs> Saggy drinking old nuts. Drinking green Four Locos by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Having the best yeah. time. But yeah, but that was a that was a, a situation where I totally could have reacted and just been like "fuck you." But all I did was stare at them, yeah, with a straight face. That's a good way to go. And they like laughed at me and did that, and I just didn't smile. I just continued to kind of stare on. I think that's and a then good their strategy, light turned yeah. on and they they went away. But yeah. yeah, I used to do that when I when I get bullied a lot in like uh, middle school and elementary school. My my strategy is always just to kind of stare like emotionless at them. Yeah. My, my thinking at the time was that they might think I'm, like, a robot and yeah. I could kill them somehow. Like, RoboCop, I have, like, a gun hidden in my leg or something. Yeah. But also that maybe I'm, like, a psycho. Like, they don't know who they're fucking with. Yeah, exactly. But looking back, I think that strategy also works. It did work. I think it still works because in that moment where you're not reacting, you're just looking at them, it provides, like, a mirror for them to see themselves. Yeah. And when they when they see that you're not feeding them they're just looking for a reaction so that they can yeah. continue this thing. But if you don't give them anything, they just have to be, the, the silence is just like a mirror for them and they're just seeing how awful they are. Yeah, totally. Like, hey, you better go find someone else who's going to like play this game with you because I'm like, yeah. I'm just going to show you what you just did. Yeah, you know? no, totally. And it kind of, it usually does work. It, sometimes it pisses people off even more because they don't want to look inside. Yeah. I don't want to be like, oh. I'm kind yeah, of I mean, kudos to you, man. I'm de- developing that mental fortitude is is hard. Yeah, that's I don't. Yeah, because I, you know, I I look at that myself, and it's like in those situations, I know that I know if I was just chill about it and just let it go, that yeah. everything would be fine. Right. You know? Right. But the only problem is I'm not thinking that in that moment. Yeah. You know. Well, right. and everybody has their own kind of reactions to that, right? Like. Whether it's anxiety or just stress or anger or depression, whatever it is, you know. Yeah. When you're feeling, you know, depressed, for example, like you're really going to probably spend more time thinking about how you're depressed rather than about how if you just let this go, yeah, that things would be easier, you know. I guess that, yeah, that's true. Yeah. But I guess that kind of puts that into like, to a bigger window from, from road rage yeah. to, you know. It does seem a little bit like the difference being like you're, when you're dealing with somebody else, it seems like for me it's easier to understand the energy difference when mm-hmm. somebody comes at me with a bunch of bullshit. Yeah. For me to be like, that's not mine. Yeah. I don't have to deal with that. But if it's like depression, anxiety, it's not as clear to me like who whose it is or where it came from. Yeah. If it's like a guy in a pickup truck that's like trying to, you know, impress me with his truck nuts. It's like, yeah, yeah, you go do that. Like, I understand, I understand that situation because it's very clear Mm -hmm. what's going on there, but it's a little bit more muddy when it comes to like, like we talked about like anxiety that's doesn't really have a a cause. It's just kind of there. Yeah. Like general anxiety. It's like, where is that coming from? How do I, how do I deal with that? You know, it's not like, yeah, it's not so clear like where the I, where the I am. Well, yeah. And where that is. I feel like everybody kind of has their own unique stress reaction, though. Yeah. You know, some people react with anxiety. <laughs> some people react with depression. Some people, I don't know, react with a combination of everything. You know? Yeah. 
That's true. I was anger, I was, anxiety, and depression. You know. Yeah. But like, if you're depressed and you're driving down the highway and some dick cuts you off in a truck, you're not gonna go chase him down. Yeah. You're probably just gonna be like, oh, this is my life. Oh, uh, whatever. My, my life's over. FML. I'm just gonna add yeah. this to another thing I can cry about. I was reading about um, anger and depression recently, and uh, it was what's his name. Uh, the the psychologist dude, uh, Fro- Freud, I think, I think it was Freud that said that anger turned inwards is depression, mm. which I had, I think I heard that before. I never really thought about it, but I kind of like, I guess I, I kind of forgot about ang- how anger can play into a depression because like, yeah, my ex wife was um, a anxiety and depression researcher yeah and she was studying the the, de- the link between anxiety and depression mm-hmm. and her findings and like her crew basically found that like it, if any prolonged anxiety basically does turn into depression like they're almost two co- sides of the same coin yeah if you have one long enough it is depression and and on the other well, yeah. side if you have depression you're more likely to have anxiety also well yeah and i we i've talked to my therapist about this like like depression comes when your anxiety gets so overwhelmed that it just gives up right right <clears throat> like i can't do anything about this i can't do anything about this I, what am i going to do what am i going to do what am i going to do yeah and eventually you ask yourself what you're going to do so much that you go i'm i can't do anything right right i'm yeah, worthless it's done I'm, same I'm with, and the same with anger know? that has yeah. no place no outlet yeah, exactly. And it's just like, well, I can't, there's nothing for me to fight or destroy. Yeah. That's going to fix this. So it just like turns into helplessness maybe. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. Yeah. Pretty interesting. Yeah. It's pretty interesting, man. Yeah. So maybe those guys you saw on a truck today, they'll, they'll be crying tomorrow. I'm sure. Yeah. About it's, something. It does seem like a big front kind of for, for something. Maybe that truck's about to get repoed. Who fucking knows, man? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So I'm going to go pee really quick. Okay. Do a little pee pee. That was a good one. Uh, okay. Okay. So, now we go. We got some questions here. Okay. I'm just going to reintroduce this. I think we might p- fix that in post. So. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, what Joe going to do about it? Um, dear Joe, my mom wants me circumcised. My mom said to me that she wants to go to heaven and had promised to God that if she has a son, She will circumcise him. I'm under 18 and I am an atheist. I really don't get how she is religious because she never goes to church and she isn't obeying at least three of the Ten Commandments. IDK, why bring this up? I don't really like the idea of circumcision, (laughs) but IDK. Should I accept it or decline it? I'm sorry if my grammar is bad. I can't sleep. Can I see? Can I read that? Okay. So, she wants to go to heaven. She wants her son to go to heaven. And had promised to God that if she has a son, she will circumcise him. So, your mom sounds crazy. (laughs) (laughs) This is, because this is some weird shit, man. Um, Yeah, that, but like, what religion is that in? Is that an inner religion? Like, you have to, like, promise to circumcise your son? I don't know if it... I mean, I don't know enough about religion, but... So, I so I know in, in Judaism that, like, you you get circumcised. It's kind of like the origin of getting a circumcision. You usually do that when you're, like, born, not when you're, like, 18 yeah. or 19, though, right? Yeah. I imagine that's got to change When things. you're, like, young, young. Yeah. But, um, okay, so I'm under 18 and I am an atheist. I really don't get shit how she was really... Okay. Well, following the Ten Commandments, who the fuck follows the Ten Commandments? Yeah. What's the what's one of the commandments? Hey, don't covet. You know, don't covet someone else. That's all wife. we do nowadays. Yeah, of course, you stare at other people. Like, of course, yeah. You know, 
Even Covet if you're in a monogamous can. relationship, of course you're going to notice an attractive person. Like, nobody yeah. follows the fucking commandments. Like, so fuck, like, yeah, that that's not necessary. But like, well, he did say IDK, why bring this up? So. Yeah. Sorry. I'm sorry if my grammar is bad. I can't sleep. Yeah. It sounds like you got something else going on that's already bugging you. And it's probably more than the circumcision thing. Like, I, it sounds like you maybe think? you love your mom and you really respect your mom, but if your mom thinks crazy things like that, perhaps you shouldn't be taking life direction from her. <clears throat> right. You know, that's what I would say. I wonder, yeah. You know, because you, you could probably do a lot better for yourself if you're under 18 and just realize now that, hey, I love my mom, but that doesn't mean that she's a reliable source of information. Yeah. You know? You think he's just, just now entry, entering the period of disillusionment with, yeah. with his mom? Like, maybe she's crazy. Like, yeah, exactly. Maybe I never realized how I crazy my mom is. just now starting to realize. Yeah. Because, I mean, if the kid's, mm-hmm. like, 14 or 15, that's kind of when you start to become aware of that kind of stuff. I guess so. You're like, oh, my mom's kind of an asshole. Yeah. Or like, oh, yeah, hey, my dad's kind of a weird guy. Or yeah. He just made that woman uncomfortable or whatever, you know? Yeah. But, yeah, that's a, that's a weird one, man. It would I just wouldn't. be, yeah, especially if you're in, living in that household, yeah. you don't really have any, like, choice. Yeah. And your mom just keeps bringing it up, like. Yeah. So. In conclusion, I gonna... wouldn't do it, and I would probably have a conversation with my mom and just be like, look, I I don't know what about that makes you think that you're going to go to heaven. Yeah. But that's not what I believe in. Right. And I love you, but I'm not going to do it because that that would put me out, you know. <laughs> yeah, I guess it would. Yeah, that's a life changing What are you thing. What are you gonna tell your friends? Yeah. What if you're do, what if he's dating somebody? <laughs> yeah. Man or woman. What if he's dating somebody? Oh, I'm gonna be out of commission for a few weeks. Yeah. Oh, let's go. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go get circum what are you no. I didn't really want to, but my mom <laughs> My <so>. mom just <laughs> kinda made me. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty awkward. No, but that's tough too, because the kid's still under eighteen, so he still has a lot of his parents like influence in his life you know yeah 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 man that's a <laughs> that's a weird one that's a tough situation that is a weird one i feel yeah. for that guy i feel for that kid yeah that's pretty awful yeah that's rough <laughs> you can't choose your parents though so you can deal with yeah true hand your dealt but whatever that's true but anyway okay what what else you got you said you got another one i could try to do one more here okay um this one's a little bit longer, but uh, it's, I think it's going to be worth it. This person really needs your advice. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> pretty sure my dad is faking illness advice. My dad has COPD. He's on a regime of medications which are helping greatly. Recently, he started coughing a lot more when he's around his family. He does so in an extremely dramatic manner, so much so it obviously seems fake. Still, he is my dad and I love him. I booked him with three different specialists did imaging, lab testing, a sleep study, echo for heart, and another to check pulmonary pressure. This cost me nearly 3.5K out of pocket, and my country insurance is shit. Every single doctor said his condition is fine and that he is stable. They gave him a newer medication as well. He rarely coughs when alone, when talking to friends, when walking outside, or when on the phone. He only coughs around us in a way that is clearly to grab our attention. I tested him for COVID four times, and he's negative. He comes around our rooms at night and starts coughing dramatically and fakes being out of breath. Can someone help with advice? Did you ever experience this before? I'm shuffling two jobs at the moment and trying to make ends meet. This is seriously stressing me out. Damn. (laughs) Why does the world got to be so full of crazy people? The image of him just like sneaking around the hallways at night, like coughing by the doors. Can I see that? (laughs) So back... (laughs) <laughs> he has COPD. Right, which is going to cause some of those things, right? Yeah. He's on a regimen of medications, which are helping greatly. Well, your dad sounds like a narcissist. <laughs> yeah, I just want some attention. Like, maybe... Uh, he, I mean, I don't doubt for a second that this guy actually has... Health issues. Health issues. Yeah. And conditions. But with, like... With with health issues come mental health issues, too. Right. Because it kind of puts you in a bubble a little bit, right? Like, you know, I have COPD. I can't really breathe as well as you can, so you need to treat me a certain way. 
or else I'm being disrespected, you know? Uh, yeah. So, Silly's so my own dad, and I love him. I booked him with three different specialists, did imaging, count three, 3.5K out of pocket. Yeah. Well, That's you, gotta sting a little bit. you are just the best fucking kid in the world. Yeah. Like, oh my God. Doing that even though she thinks that he's faking it. Yeah. <laughs> Which is like. Yeah. But, you, you know, that's hard, though, because that's that's your dad, you know? I guess you can't really accuse him of that. Yeah. That's how do not going to go well. How do you tell your dad, I think you're. Bullshit. I think you're bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> no, I th- I guess not necessarily I think you're faking your sickness, because obviously the guy has the sickness. He's yeah. dealing with something. Is I think you're playing it up in front of me. Yeah. And that causes me a certain amount of unnecessary stress. You know? Right. I feel like that's a fair conversation to have. Just like go to your dad and be like, hey, like, I really feel like you play these things up in front of me. And I don't want you to take this as a personal attack or anything like that. But I don't see you do this around other people. I only see you. And, you know, yeah. you still got to give them the benefit of the doubt. It's like, obviously, I'm not around around you all the time. There's there's certain times when I'm not around. I mean, you could be singing my praises of, over how great I am over your, your sickness and everything like that. But, yeah. it, but to me, it sounds like that person is being taken advantage of a little bit. Playing on their heartstrings a little yeah, bit. Yeah, because he's, like, playing up his sickness a bit. Obviously, she's got some money. He doesn't really have any money. Yeah. 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 And said my, my country's insurance. Where is this person from? It sounds like America. <laughs> I don't know. They didn't say where. But my yeah. country insurance is shit. I think it, it's, it's got to be outside of America. Yeah. Because nobody has country insurance in, in America. What is that? As insurance that's administered by the federal government, you know. We have insurance that's regulated by the federal government. Oh, okay. but I think this person's from another. Yeah, I always just assume that there was like a gr- grammatical it's, error. Yeah, it sounds like uh, it sounds like it's Canada or something like that. Oh, okay. But yeah, no. I, what? <laughs> just looking at that situation as an unbiased perspective, I would have a conversation with my dad, and just be like, "Look, I've invested a lot of money into your sickness. Like, it's not. It, it's not something that I have to do." Yeah. And I also feel like maybe you're making me a little extra feel guilty for your sickness when I don't necessarily deserve that. Yeah. Like that's a fair conversation. And if he gets all upset and he gets all pissed off, just be like, Hey, I'm just telling you the facts and I'm telling you the way I feel. Would you prefer that I be secretive about this kind of thing? You know? Right. I don't know. Yeah. Both of those situations, there's probably a lot going on behind the scenes too. And, and you know what? I'll give you the benefit of the doubt too, because I even I even say that I that's exactly what I would do, but I try to look in a mirror at myself, having that own conversation with my own dad. Yeah, that's a hard conversation. Yeah. So that's yeah. My heart goes out to this person. Yeah, it's a pretty awkward scenario. Yeah, that's tough, man. That's tough. <laughs> but yeah, your dad sounds like a narcissist a little bit too. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the, yeah. The answer is that. Yeah. Everybody's a narcissist, basically. Yeah, everybody's fucked up in the head. Yeah. Pretty much. Well, there you go. Well, yeah, there you go. There you have it. But anyway, should we uh, talk to Char? Should we get Charlie on the horn here? All right. Okay, so here All we right, are. right arm. Yeah. Right arm, right dude. Arm. Right arm. So we have uh, <laughs> we have our good friend uh, Charles Westerman on the, uh, on the Two Honks podcast with us here. Charlie. Today. How's it going, fellas? Pretty good. How are you? Good. I'm glad. Um, I'm glad we started this podcast so we had an excuse to catch up. Yeah, exactly. I got, <laughs> I've got to catch up with Joe a little bit because I needed some health insurance, which yeah, uh, turned out <laughs> he sold me on the clutch. Yeah, it turned. It turned out to work. I'm happy that it worked oh, like that. Good. Well, yeah, man. I mean, it, we I, we don't have to get right into that right away. But how's uh How's, how's your weekend been? How's like your, your weeks at home been since you returned? Um, it's been, it's been, it's been good. It's been nice to be home with my dog. Yeah. And, uh, my brother, my brother, Mick, who's my roommate, has been doing, doing wound care. Um, oh, okay. And he's, 
he's just turns out he is a five star wet nurse. Oh really? Oh, wow. So yeah. So good reviews. No, okay. he's. He, I say that because we're brothers and we like to dick with each other. But he's yeah. he's been doing my wound care, but it has been it's been a bit of an adjustment. Like it was one thing being in the hospital and being incapacitated, but. I've never had like a major injury in my life, so I'm just kind of used to being able to, especially when I'm home, just yeah. being able to do what I need to do. My yeah. car is still in Billings, and <laughs> <You're>, <laughs> so, so I can't you're... I can't go anywhere. Wow. Oh, okay. Your car is still in Montana, then. Yeah, I, I, you know, Joe. I say, should we just get this whole cross fight? <laughs> yeah. No, we should. We should <laughs> tell the story. Out of the way. We've already we've already started. So. Okay, so I don't mind just knocking it out and then okay. we can move on to other stuff. So here we, we so, can, um, yeah, it will prompt the beginning a little bit. You went to Missoula, Montana to spend some time with your friend and work on your book, right? Yeah, uh, to okay. Billings. Yeah, Billings, um, Montana. So I'm from Wyoming. A buddy um, from high school lives in Billings. He's an optometrist. So yeah, I just went up there to hang out with him for the week and yeah, try and. Um, I'm finishing up like my last revision on my second book, um, before I send it, I have two literary agents who have, um, heard my pitch and read the first 15 pages of it and liked it enough to ask for the full manuscript, uh, cool. which yeah. is a big deal. It's, it's different than just cold querying, um, cold querying an agent who doesn't know you. I actually got to talk with them for half an hour and stuff. So That's I'm trying awesome. to do this final revision before I send it to them and hopefully they'll represent me. Wow. And yeah, so Friday, February 12th, I'd, I had my second to last chapter. I, I needed totally reworked and I got about halfway done through that and was like, all right, I'll get, I'll uh, take the weekend. Felt pretty good about the, the way to add work wise up in, up in Billings. And yeah. so I was like, I'll take the weekend and chill and then I'll, when I get home, I can about probably three or four more days. I I need to finish that revision and then do one more kind of final read through. It would probably take about it'll probably take about two days. I'll try and kind of plow through it and then I can send it to him. So it was feeling pretty good, and we went out to the uh, downtown bar scene and doing things and went did some karaoke at the Crystal Lounge. So <laughs> nice. Few shoots. Doing a dance. Uh -oh. you no, know, is where you fit and you go. Cutting out a little bit here. Yeah, uh, you, you cut out you. a little bit right there. And, uh, oh shoot! Uh oh. A little technical difficulties me. here. Yeah. Ah, oh, Jesus. I wonder if it's a. Uh... Oh, shoot. We'll fix this in post. Your Wi-Fi isn't connected to my phone anymore. I wonder if that might be it. Oh, really? Uh, can you... Hey, oh, can you guys oh. hear me now? Now you're back. Yep, we got you. Okay. Okay, I just... It might have been... I turned it... I just turned my cellular data off, so maybe it was trying to do my FaceTime audio. So, sorry, sorry gotcha. to the listeners. I live, like, 10 miles from downtown Denver on a hill. And even though it's the only major metropolitan area for 500 <laughs> miles in any directions, for whatever reason, I don't have service at my house yeah, or yeah. very good service. So, yeah, no, no uh, okay. okay. So, okay. When, so you can said, you still hear me? Well, yeah, yeah. I, I had a question actually. So in Billings, uh, what, what are like the, what are the COVID restrictions like? I mean, is like, is everything pretty much open? Do they just not worry about it or what's going on over there? Yeah. I mean, they're, they were, I think they were about getting ready to pretty much just go back to like total, totally normal. Um, when I was up there, they were still doing like wear your masks and, yeah, and, and, you know, in until you sit down wherever and, um, and then, you know, stay, try and stay six feet apart from people and yeah. limiting people in the bathroom. But, you know, at, da at Daisy Duke's saloon and dance hall, maybe, <laughs> I don't think they were quite enforcing that as much. <laughs> nice. Oh my gosh, man. Oh, that's crazy, dude. 
So what were your karaoke yeah. jams? Did you hit hit out some some classic jams on the uh, yeah on the karaoke? Yeah, I was um, I was feeling pretty pretty country that night, so <laughs> yeah. um, I did I did a pretty a pretty decent rendition I think of Brooks and Dunn's Boot Scoot and Boogie. Oh, nice. All right. Okay. Yeah, that's a good karaoke so, jam. <laughs> I know I can't always like slip seamlessly into the like. Because you got to be able to like do the kind of growly, go into like the, out in the country, you know. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, sometimes, yeah. sometimes you like have it to where it's pretty seamless, and sometimes you don't. But I had it that night. Yeah, that's uh, so, that depends anyways, on the amount of whiskey you have or, or the style of whiskey that you drink. I think. Yeah. Yeah, I I maybe did a couple of shots of uh, Maker's Mark at the Crystal Lounge. Okay, <laughs> classic. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so anyways. Um, about one, I I think the bar is closed down at or like at like one or so, and we went to get an Uber. It was negative twenty five or so degrees. Damn, Jesus. in Billings, and it was like um, slick and late and cold, really cold, and so there were not a lot of drivers available, and so there was no ride for us. There wasn't really anywhere to just go hang out while we waited for one. So we walked at the mile and some change back to uh matt my buddy's apartment and i did not have gloves i meant to pack some because i knew it was going to be cold Damn. but just like somehow forgot them and then you know it was really cold at one point i slipped so my hands got kind of wet that didn't help uh. and then i was also like this is cold and sucks i'm gonna smoke a cigarette to try and pass the time okay so so my right hand was was frostbit worse than my left hand, and that's because that was the hand I was smoking a cigarette with. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> man! Oh, shoot. So, anyways, it was yeah. I mean, we weren't we weren't out for more than it was. It was like twenty twenty five minutes of how long it took us to walk. So it was not super long. So no. is it? Do you think your hand froze mostly because you fell down and your hand got wet? Yeah, I think so because you know. You guys seen my nose? It's not small. Like that didn't get frosted. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh my god. So, wow. Yeah. So, not a combination of not smart and, you know, kind of ironic that I couldn't get an Uber since I've driven for Uber for like four years. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you're also talking about an Uber in, you know, Billings, Montana, which. Yeah. At that at the time of year you were there is completely frozen over, so I don't think too many people are going to want to work in Billings, Montana, for Uber at that time of night, yeah. right? I yeah, mean... <clears throat> yeah, that's something we we probably should have anticipated, but we also figured, like you know, you kind of figure, yeah, um, if you are an Uber driver in Billings and you're trying to make a buck, then you kind of know, you know, you know that. Daisy Dukes closes at one and you can get some rides and maybe get like a surge rate. But at the same time, I don't, I don't blame people for not wanting to drive when it's minus 25 Yeah, exactly. and flick out. Like if you, even if you're driving smart in the snow and somebody else runs into you, then you can't, you can't drive until you get that fixed and like make money. So. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Right. Well, damn. So dude. anyways, so what, yeah, you're we, so we've gotten gotten to the point where you passed out of your friend's place. So, so what happened? What, what was the, the what was the next morning like? How was how was that after you woke up and after you passed out? Yeah, I like we got home and I was like, man, these don't look great. But I also was just kind of like, ah, whatever, they'll be fine. Yeah. And woke up a little before seven and my right hand had like um, swollen up pretty significantly. And I was like, this isn't great. <laughs> and then I was talking to my brothers who were paramedics and I was like telling them, I was like, yeah, my hands don't seem like they're in great shape. And they were like, I find they were kind of, you know, they told me like send her, I finally sent them a picture and they were like, oh my God, go to the ER. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of downplaying yeah. it. So I went to the ER in Billings. Um, yeah, they got me in a room. They, um, what turned out to be a super clutch move, they got me on this like anti-clot blood clot medication they give people for strokes. 
so that um, wow. so that my fingers like wouldn't clot and the circulation um, could still go to them and like I'd still have perfusion is the medical term they use for like circulation I guess hmm. in my fingers so they did that and put my hands and um, had them in like lukewarm water because if you go from your fingers being yeah. frostbit to like putting them in hot water that is not good it's too drastic of a change yeah yeah um, it definitely and then this uh one gal and i've never been on morphine in my life until then, <laughs> until then <laughs> so that got a little loopy so this one gal i can't i don't even know if she was a doctor or a pa or a nurse practitioner but she was just like we are gonna get you to the university of utah hospital because they have the best burn and frostbite center this side of the mississippi um, and that's your best chance. <laughs> is, that with, is that the way she said it? Is, <laughs> yeah, she, she literally said, said that. Of the Mississippi? <laughs> yes, which is one of my favorite <laughs> phrases, especially living out in the West. No, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> I, if that were to happen to me, I would love that. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And I was like, hell yeah. So she was like, I mean, we could do a, okay, you know, a job. But, you know, we could try and do all we could for you, but that's like they're the best people to go to. So, yeah. A- anyways, like two, two and a half hours later, I was getting on a flight to to Utah. Not a helicopter, just like a little little airplane. And yeah, yeah. Got got to Utah, and so the, um, wait, wait, they flew you on an airplane? Oh yeah, yep me and my my flight medics so it was uh, randy was it, randy and spencer so it was like a, a little like propeller plane or like what, what kind of plane was it yeah it was like yeah it was like a little little propeller plane little pu- oh puddle jumper oh. and uh yeah R- randy and spencer were my flight medics and they were awesome was it fun um, did you guys party <laughs> <laughs> well, I partied. I got a free bar. You, or... you were high on morphine the whole time. Was that an open well, bar yeah, situation, Spence... or you pay as you go? Oh, yeah, pretty much. Spencer was open like, bar. Dude, he's like, he's like, if you need more more morphine, let me know. Like, oh, okay. Seriously, <laughs> and and I like I did I hit him up a few times because <laughs> I um, would too, man. When, well, we like going up in the altitude. It was making my fingers swell more. Oh, okay. um, so it, well, like, yeah. it, it did. Le- it did legit. They were. They did hurt. <laughs> I was like, when you're in a little plane like that, was, like, you're you're not sitting yeah. in a cabin that's like pressure controlled. Like when you're in a big airliner jet, so that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, I mean, I think maybe they have some of that, but I don't know. It was. Yeah, they they definitely hurt, <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah, damn. Spencer, I might take another hit of that, but yeah. But and then and then the pilot I don't I never really saw him but I know his name was Manny and he did like the gentlest landing into into Salt Lake City that maybe <laughs> any pilots ever had and I was I just yelled back I was like I was like you don't you don't land a plane any smoother than that Manny I just, <laughs> I just, I just fucking really appreciated him putting it down easy because like big bumps like hurt my fingers you know oh, yeah. So. yeah totally. I was like, never saw his face, but I will always love Manny the pilot. I feel like that's a phrase you put on your tombstone when you die. You you don't land a plane <laughs> smoother than that, Manny. <laughs> All it has under oh, that is yeah. your name and your <laughs> the years you lived. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, then I did a uh, nine days in University of Utah Hospital, and Damn. the care was care was really really great um at one point they kind of uh my fingers were swollen up and looked like an orc that like one of the lord of the ring orcs yeah one of their fingers yeah and, we, saw, uh, we saw that picture from the hospital there man that 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 shit was gnarly pretty gnar and, the, Which, and my doctor hey, saw that do you, yeah do you mind if we put that picture on our on our instagram when we when we when we post this episode <laughs> no put it up man that thing get that thing is some clickbait yeah i want to i want to oh, yeah. put the gnarly one up so people get an idea before they listen to this but anyway yeah i got more i could send you more you okay <laughs> yeah no i'll i'll take them send them my way man 
Yeah, I could send you some of those and then like get kind of some of the healing ones too if you yeah. want. If you want to do a little montage. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Photographic no, montage. Definitely. So Yeah, but at one point they um so yeah, Saturday night just kind of uh settled in and then Sunday morning they took off my wraps and they were, they looked like that. And I was like, Oh my gosh, this is oh, not God, good. Man. It's pretty, like they, they didn't look good before that. But then like even my left hand was supposed to be the one that wasn't as bad. And like my pinky, the blister had popped. Sorry for the listeners. It's just, you just hate. <laughs> but <laughs> oh, those but people it, stopped like, listening a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it like flew up. It's almost, it was almost like, you know, like when you, like if you were inflating one of those balloon animal balloons, like it mm-hmm. full up yeah. like that and then it popped. And then so like my finger with the nail, the tip of it was just like, you know, keeled over on the top of the, my pinky bone. And I was like, Ooh. that's my left hand. It's supposed to be the good one. I was like, well, that they're going to have to take that sucker. And there goes me ever playing, you know, guitar with some sense of normalcy. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, but I had I had a nurse who uh, he was he like talked me off the ledge. The doctor, when she saw my right hand, later told me she thought she told me and my mom was on speakerphone. She told us like I'm pretty worried. I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty worried about Charlie's fingers. But she later told me that she thought she was gonna have to amputate all four of them of my wow. fingers on my right hand except for my thumb. So, um. But then we went and got scans and I still had perfusion to all of them. And she came back and was like, okay, like we got a chance here. She's like, those were way better than I thought. And it's time to get, to get in attack mode. And we're going to, we're going to like pop these blisters on your hands. And so they essentially degloved my hand. They popped them and um, we're just like cutting the skin off. And yeah, um, it, it, it hurt. <laughs> it hurt a lot. Um, I went they, through what, like 200. They, so they didn't put you under for something like that? Um, no, they didn't. I did go through 250 cc's of fentanyl, which was uh. a lot. Like, I think if you, if you just, and not all at once, they were giving me like 50 at a time. Yeah. But yeah. if you gave like a, a horse 250 cc's of fentanyl, I think they'd feel it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Wow. So, well, was, obviously, they didn't get that. Bit, but, oh my god, man! Geez. But I did. I mean, you guys know me. I love to quote. I love to just like apply movie and TV quotes to my life. I did yeah. do the Steve, the Steve Carell and in Forty uh, Year Old Virgin, like Kelly Clarkson, <laughs> at one point, just to like. <laughs> you and the nurse is getting when he's like getting his chest waxed in the movie. That one? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I know the scene you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. But like one of the kind of like, yeah. Oh, famous my God. Scenes of that movie. So the, the nurses appreciated that. There was one girl who was a nursing student who like went and stood by the sink for a bit and I think was just like trying to breathe through her nose. <laughs> it, was, it was kind of intense. But oh. I actually enjoy like maybe not enjoyed, but I was watching them do it because I was like, this is going to hurt. Yeah, like a song bitch anyways and if it's gonna hurt like I'd rather see the visual satisfaction of like getting my fingers back a little <laughs> yeah so wow. man I don't so know. Was... I, I, how did you not like insist that they put you under for something like that because I I'm I, maybe I'm just a bitch man that's what I would have done like why, did, why didn't you do that <laughs> um I don't know. They they didn't offer, and I was just like, I don't like, I, I guess yeah, I could have. Yeah, I just figured. Let's, you just you just kind of went with the flow. Just went with the flow. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Some some of those anesthetics and stuff it slows your circulation. I think. Yeah. And that's not what they yeah. wanted to. You know, they didn't want to do that at that point. Yeah. Hmm. And uh, I had. I had, I guess you, I think we're going to talk about my first book at one point, but like I yeah. have a character in there who's based on my uncle who is a quadriplegic and he like had, he got in a diving accident in 1973 and they, um, they didn't want to mess with the circulation. So they literally just like put Novocaine on, um, they had to put him in like a steel halo and screw these oh, like yeah. thumb screws into his head 
Wow. And they literally, like, all they did was put Novocaine at the, you know, like in the spots where he was getting it and then screwed Damn. <laughs> screws into his skull while he was conscious. Uh, oh, um, okay. So I was like, well, if he could do that, <laughs> I, I could do this. You Western mans are real Western men, let me tell you. Yeah, wow. Yeah, we're, we're country folk. <laughs> <laughs> but... So that was about, was that about two weeks ago now when they degloved it? Yeah, it had been, yeah, it had been, it was like two weeks, two weeks ago yesterday. Okay. So, but yeah, then they, she was like, we're going to, you know, deglove you and then we're going to get you going on the PT and, cause, which is, uh, you know, hospital lingo jargon for physical yeah. therapy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Just yeah, that's crazy. That. So after that, um, you were able to get out of the hospital? Yeah, I was there. So that was like day, my first full day there was the degloving, and then I was out of there after like another week. Okay, okay. So, yeah. But home, and I still have, so the listeners know, I still have all 10 of my fingers. All right. On. They, are, they are healing on up. Good. And they're still, they're still a little sensitive. Well, pretty sensitive, like the tips of them and stuff. So it'll take some time. Um, yeah. There's still a chance, like some of the tips of my fingers on my right hand, um, there's p- like partial perfusion in them. So they'll either come all the way back or kind of just crap out on me and they would have to amputate those, but they won't know on that for months. Yeah. It's right. Like, so this okay. surgeon line with frostbite is, um, injury in January and surgery in July. So it kind of takes them in a lot of cases, like a while before they kind of know how, how things are going to play out. Yeah. The body, everybody's got a different body and heals in different ways. And it just kind of yeah does what it does. So can I ask but, you a, like a specific, maybe kind of a gnarly question about the fingers? Oh, for sure. Are you, uh, I, I slammed my thumb in my car door like two years ago. And, um, you know, I didn't realize at first how bad it was, but by the end of that day, it was like the worst pain ever I've ever had. And I found out after like, I don't know, the next several weeks, I found out that I had like killed the, the nail bed itself. It like destroyed it. So that, that whole nail like fell off over the course of like several months, um, and regrew from like nothing. But it was like, you know, I didn't realize how big of a deal that was. And when I saw your, um, frostbite hands i was wondering about the nail beds and how if you're going to lose the nail beds themselves if they're going to have to like regrow themselves like are they going to fall off too like your fingernails yeah so i mean in the uh in the degloving of my right hand like they all they all fell off um wow and so yeah they're my my left hand the nails are are growing but like yeah they're starting to grow back just... My right hand, my my thumb is, and then the the other fingers. It's it's kind of like as of today. It, it's there's like it seems like they're trying to grow back, mm-hmm. but it's not quite as. So yeah, they the, take a yeah, long time, yeah. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't know either. Like your nail bed is like a good quarter inch or so below your actual fingernail. Like right, right. It kind of starts way down there, but. Yeah, that's a process. I mean, that that alone is several months. And my my finger, it's been over a year and a half. It's the nail is still not, it's, it's still not totally grown out <laughs> to where the other one. Really? Is. Yeah, I think it's gonna take yeah, another no. year or something. I lost a toenail on a backpacking trip in college. It, it took a long <laughs> on my big toe, and it took a long time to come back. Oh, that's a big honker. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it is a big old honker. <laughs> big oh, honker. Yeah. Big old honk. <laughs> well, that's uh, that's quite a journey you've got ahead of you then too, because yeah, the nail beds alone are that's I mean that's takes a lot of time and it's it's super painful I know from experience so, and then you got on top of that all that skin which is even more sensitive I imagine, it's got to re yeah, yeah it's like and it's it's pretty impressive how fast it's come back in two weeks but it's still like, um I do like part of my physical therapy is just doing these like like trying to put my you know, like 
do like a claw with my fingers and then holding that for like 20 to 30 seconds because hold like it's not till like 20 seconds that your skin starts to kind of stretch. Ah. Mm. So you're thinking, you know, the skin on your fingers is pretty elastic. Um, and so all this new skin just needs to be like stretched out. Right. Huh. Wow. So, yeah. Holy shit, dude. Wow. Well, man, I'm really, yeah. I'm well, really happy. Well, I figured you guys needed some, some yeah. saucy content for your podcast. So That's, I was yeah. like, well, I guess I should probably get some frostbite. <laughs> yeah, man. So That's, I'm interested. It's yeah, a juicy exactly. offering you gave us there, yeah, all for seriously. the podcast. Oh. No, that's that's really crazy, man. I d- I'm just so happy that you came out of it as uh, as optimistically as you did. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. No, I had, I had, you know, one of the cool things about this experience was, it, it, especially over the last four years, um, you know, I think it's easy to get cynical about people and negative about people and. Um, you know, whatever side of the political um, spectrum you're on, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's gotten nasty and unpleasant, but like, it really was just like my, my medical care was so awesome. Um, I had, I had like some real moments with people that I knew for like two hours, you know? Yeah. Like my, my, one of my flight, Spencer, my flight medic who has given me the morphine at one point was just like, dude, he's like, you seem like a positive guy. And like a good dude, and you're just like I, I know nothing's guaranteed, but I feel like you're gonna come through this like in, in a positive way, and you're gonna make it through this, and you're gonna go on and live a good life. And I was like, that is, that was cool. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, thanks for saying that. Like, I kind of needed to hear that, and kind of gave me some, yeah. You know, and I had a couple other things like that. So, and then, so the medical staff was great, and just all the people from all the different corners of my life were just so awesome i've had like my friend from college his mom sent me a shitload of caramel corn <laughs> and, <laughs> and and some like dessert bars that's the best thing um, you that i can't remember can. the name that the, i can't remember the name of but they i had one and they're delicious like yeah man <laughs> just so people have been you know people just reached out and and been awesome so it's been a nice little kind of like remembrance that um, yeah. people don't just suck and they yeah. can just be awesome and caring and, and there is a lot of goodness. So yeah. yeah, that's my, that's my little hallmark moment for my appearance on this podcast. <laughs> Fuck yeah, man. Yeah. That's, that's an amazing uh, journey there. That's intense, man. Yeah. I just can't believe yeah. you use the term D gloved. Like, fuck you. Yeah. I don't ever want to hear that word ever again. <laughs> yeah. I came across that term on Reddit one day, like years ago, and, and somebody was like, yeah, just Google it. <laughs> just and Google it. Everybody beneath that was like, don't Google that. <laughs> don't look that up. Yeah. No, it's when Sarah's dog Maverick got hit by a car, they called it a degloving wound. And I. When you say oh. that, I just remember the sight of that wound because I saw it. Yeah. Granted, it was on a dog, but it was not pretty, man. Yeah. Wait, it's when just, did Maverick get hit by a car? It was, um, I had a diaper kegger before Ezra was born. And, oh, um, nice. we, well, I, did I, did I tell you about the diaper kegger? You kager? told me that... about the diaper kegger. You gave nice. me the idea. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but, uh, we, we had the party. Me and my buddy Jed stayed up all night drinking. And, um, we, we passed out, um, and woke up in the morning to, to Maverick, Sarah's dog, just totally fucked up. Like it was on his left front paw, like hit the skin was completely gone. Like you could just see blood and like nerve endings. Like that was like all you could see. And, uh, yeah, when we took him to the emergency vet, they called it a, uh, a degloving wound. So you went, when you say oh the word God. degloving, yeah. I'm like, I know exactly what that is. Like, <laughs> just imagine yeah, no guess- skin and just your uh, exposed organs. It's, it's pretty gruesome. It's yeah. pretty damn I got, gruesome. I got that one from my nurse, my like head nurse that day, Eric, who was like, I was saying people who were like, he was, he was intense and he was sarcastic and he was also like, eternally optimistic and it was, he was like the perfect demeanor of a nurse for that day right on dude <laughs> yeah right on. so 
he was like, and he had his nursing student with him, and he was like talking. And he was like, so essentially, we're gonna like deglove his hand, and I was like, sounds like it's gonna hurt, but Ooh, that's yeah. kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> it makes you sound like a really, really major badass now. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking of that scene in Terminator uh, Two where he's like, or is it Terminator One where he goes under the the boiling liquid metal or whatever, and it like he yeah. just has the metal skeleton. On yeah. his hand still. Yeah. That's basically you now. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I yeah. just I just get like I'm I get weirdly I get competitive about weird shit. So like <laughs> for, for that, I was just like, you know what? I want my fucking hands back, you know. So I got kind of mad. I got I got kind of mad. Yeah. Cuz cuz otherwise I was going to cry. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, you that's a that's a that's a very tep, uh, typical testosterone fueled kind of response right like i'm gonna get mad so i don't cry (laughs) (laughs) yeah you know for sure i it's sort of a fight or flight thing but i definitely do that like i'm gonna get angry so that i don't have to cry right now yeah Yeah. (laughs) so that nobody actually has to know how much this hurts me (laughs) yeah yeah Yeah. Yeah. Gotta just put on like the put on the face sometimes. Yeah, sometimes exactly. it's not healthy, but it, it has its place for yeah, certain yeah, situations. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think everybody does it to some extent, but yeah, that's a that's a tough balance in life to strike. Like between not not like dwelling on stuff too much to the point where it kind of cripples you, but also kind of being able to acknowledge your feelings and yeah and deal with them and not just kind of suppress them. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean that's exactly what this podcast is about. We just like sit on here and talk about our feelings the whole time. So yeah. Basically. Much. Yeah. I mean for lack of is a better this terminology. What, what episode is this? This is episode six. I think it's six, yeah. Yeah. Is it? Okay. Yeah. I need to I feel like a I meant to text you and be like, hey, um remind me of the name of it again so I can check it out before I came on so I can get yeah. five and then no, did, but. we haven't really released anything yet, though. So, but we're gonna do we're gonna do a whole we're gonna release some things online like tonight as soon as we get off the off the air with you. So, oh, okay, yeah, alrighty. Yeah. So none of it none of it's on like yeah none of, iTunes and yeah we're Spotify yet. we're probably gonna upload one episode to YouTube tonight. That way we can do a a, a little licensing thing and do it all on Spotify and shit. Yeah, yeah. are you yeah. guys using like Buzzsprout? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Buzz okay. Yeah, they're pr- they're pretty functional. It's like I don't know. I think I pay like eighteen bucks a month to have yeah. like can't remember if it's four or eight hours a month of content. Yeah, uh, okay. so, yeah. That was the that was the most reasonably priced one I I saw. So okay. Yeah. 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 But yeah. Yeah, doing all the doing all the production part. Like yeah. I just I just want to be the talent. Like yeah, exactly. <laughs> I have a rant I want to do on my podcast to open. It's called "I Just Want to Be the Talent." <laughs> yeah. For about ten minutes, I just like embrace my inner prima donna. Yeah, exactly. Which, def- which definitely resides in me, and I, <laughs> <laughs> I try and keep him under control as much yeah. as I can. But sometimes I, I'm just like, I, maybe I just need to take him out for a drive on the airwaves for like uh, ten or fifteen minutes. Anybody who's going to write a book thinks they're awesome in some kind of way, right? Yeah, you do kind of you do have to yeah. kind of have like irrational confidence. Exactly, exactly. So, Lamar, um, we should we should move to our next uh, itinerary here because uh, now we know that Charlie got injured and he got all fucked up. Charlie got degloved. Yeah. That's but, gonna be the um, name of the episode. I'm gonna go outside and I'm gonna pee really quick, and Lamar is gonna ask you a handful of questions. Okay. Yeah. Is Lamar drinking a beer? I heard a burp. Is no, that a beer burp? no, I'm drinking a kombucha. I'm actually I'm doing a sober year, so I'm. Uh, I'm I I'm having a beer. I'm yeah, Joe's a... drinking twice the amount of beer, so that we can yeah keep the pace here. I'm I'm drinking in a an ecliptic brewing phaser hazy IPA. It's a good brew. Oh, ooh, yeah, that is a good brew. Yeah, that's a good I've brew. Had that's a good one. That's a good one. Sure. I'm drinking. Uh, I got I got big on the uh, cranberry apple juice in the hospital. Oh. They would just film. I finally got one of those giant hospital mugs. Like my brothers had five shoulder surgeries and always gets those sweet mugs with the straw. Yeah. 
So I finally got one of my own and the nurses would just come in and they'd be like, can I get you anything? And I'd be like, yeah, I could use a little more crayon apple. <laughs> so I brought that home with me, but I did drink a, I did drink a few uh, Cougar's Lights last night oh, while, right I played Call, while I played Call of Duty and uh, I just took my gloves. I have these like nylon gloves on now. Yeah. Um, and like my, my brother like wraps my, puts this shit on my fingers and then wraps them up and then we put the gloves over them. But last night I was just like, I need to have my fingers. Like I hate wearing socks to bed. And I like, you know, so I was like, I just need to have my fingers uncovered for a few hours. So. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I'll let you go pee Joe. Let, let, let them breathe, man. Brett, let them breathe. Yeah. Okay. But I'll <laughs> yeah. be right back. I'll be right back. Charlie. Right on. Hold tight without me. Yeah, it's gonna be weird. I miss without... you. <laughs> miss you already, Joe. I miss him too. He hasn't even left the room yet. But not as much <laughs> as I miss you, Lamar, because I haven't. Like I, like I said, I talked to Joe and he was selling me health insurance, which yeah, um, was a was a good. That was like in January because <laughs> I stopped working on our family ranch and got off their insurance then, and, and had a moment where I was like, ah, you know, I could go a few months without it. I never go to the hospital. Right, right. Turned out good good decision to uh just get that. Yeah, I mean that's like kind of the that's like one of the only good reasons to have health insurance is for random things like that, you know, it's like something you can yeah. never really see coming. You're kind yeah. of like yeah, you're you're in trouble if you don't have it. So it's good that those, you had those it. Pri- those private planes from Billings to Salt Lake City are not cheap. <laughs> oh yeah, I bet. <laughs> So you were, um, Joe was saying you were in, you were in Denver before, which is where I was before I moved out here. Um, yeah. What, what part of Denver were you staying in? Well, I'm, I'm living in Denver now. Oh, like you're there I'm, now. That's okay. Where I'm, that's where I'm doing this from. So I am, um, I'm up, my address is still technically Denver, but it's pretty much Thornton. I bought a house here like a year and a half ago. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, when I first moved, I was living in Sunnyside, like kind of by the Highlands. Yeah. Um, so I don't live where the cool kids live anymore, which has its drawbacks, but it is also nice to not, like you know, kind of be invested in something and not paying rent. Yeah. Well, um, and I've got. I was what were you gonna say? I was gonna say. Uh... I mean, when I moved out of Denver, it was 2013, and it was already kind of like I was living on Colfax and um, 12 or on uh, 12th and uh, Corona, which is like right in the mix, right by the Fillmore Theater and stuff. But um, yeah, it, even at that point, it was a little bit. It was like, is this worth it? You know, it was like it was pretty cheap compared to what it is now. But at the same time, it was kind of like, eh. it was like yeah. a, a hipster vibe. It was cool to see shows. There were shows really close by, but. But now that everything's kind of like closed or whatever, it's like it seems like a better idea to live on the outskirts. You don't have to deal with all the just a bunch of noise and like, you know, I don't know. There's yeah, there's not yeah. as much benefit to it now. Yeah, there's not like living in a neighborhood where you can walk to all the cool stuff isn't as cool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when you're in a pandemic, right? But can't can't go to the clubs. In, and sh- are you, what's that? Yeah, are you are you still in Linton? No, we had to move out of there. The owners moved back into the house, and they kicked us out. Okay, that's right. Yeah, I've actually that's got right. a, a studio apartment now with, with me and Sheila, the, the 18 and a half, almost year old cat. So Sheila's still kicking it? She's oh, kicking yeah. it, yeah. She's she's uh, she's definitely an elderly lady now, but she's uh, she's yeah. still going. She's still a bit. She's still a bad bitch. She she does. Oh, she, she will still, yeah, she, she commands attention. She's she, she still knows a party trick or two. Oh yeah, she got a trick up her sleeve <laughs> here and there. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. No, it's it's pretty cool. But I live in it's basically kind of comparable to the neighborhood I lived in in Denver, which it's like all there's all this cool stuff around, but it's not really that cool now. And there's so wait, where where are you in Portland? Uh, I'm on the west side up up. Uh, let's see, I don't know what a good. It's like northwest, um, okay. like slab town ish area. Okay, but yeah. um. Yeah, there, there's like, I mean, there's stuff over there, but everything's kind of like shut down. So it's, and there's like a huge um, homeless community that live live like right on the streets, like right like right outside my door. There's like tent communities everywhere. So it's kind of like I don't know. It's kind of surreal. 
living in this area, it's like I, I, I don't know what the draw is anymore to live in that kind of urban area, except there's like three grocery stores I could walk to in like five minutes. I guess that's like one benefit. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. I've been, I've been thinking about how nice it would be to li- have a little more space too. Cause I'm, I'm living in like a, I think it's 300 square feet or something. It's basically, a, it's a studio, but yeah, it's like a, I'm living yeah. in a bedroom basically. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. With a stove in it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe at some point, I'm- you yeah, know, I'm waiting for I Joe to. The world will go back to normal. Yeah, I don't know but... if it will. I'm waiting for Joe to <laughs> yeah. buy, buy a house, and uh, he's gonna set me up with like a little studio in the back. I can, I yeah. can live in. Yeah, so we're might... gonna set up a Lamar quarters. Yeah, you know how a lot yeah, of people set up like a, a... <laughs> a lot of people set up a mother-in-law quarters. I'm setting up a Lamar yeah. quarters. Yeah. Well, that's Travis. Me and Travis love Friends. Um, yeah, and <laughs> that the TV show. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and we. Just, we we have no shame about it, and they have like an episode where Chandler's talking to Monica about like them buying their dream ho- house, and he's like, and then we'll have an apartment of the above the garage where Joey can grow old. <laughs> <laughs> so Tra- Travis, our friend Travis, yeah. the listeners, um, his character is always telling me like, yeah, you got to buy. High-. Like he's like, I need a you need an apartment above the garage when you buy your dream house where I can grow old. So, <laughs> so maybe, I don't know. Yeah. Is maybe that, you, is that what Travis is doing? the apartment's doing big days? enough, Trav and Lamar can just stick it together <laughs> in the apartment above the garage. Yeah. Is, is Travis just counting on that these days or what's Travis doing? <laughs> How is Trav motherfucking no, Tra- funk? Is he, is he out there with you? Tra- yeah. He's, he's living with me. Okay. Oh, he's, he's living a, with he's, you. Oh yeah. Yep, he's, he's in your house. <laughs> Not right now. He's uh he's he travels for work a decent amount, so he's up. Well, where up the in fuck Wyoming. is? Ah, uh, wait. Okay, wait. But when's the next time he's gonna be back home? Um, in a few days. But yeah, if you guys need a, a good podcast guest, he came on mine and and was uh <laughs> you know on fire. I was. I he's was. I was really hoping that you would just be able to go into his room and be <laughs> like, knock on hey, his door. Get on this podcast right now. <laughs> I know we. He would. He would love that if he listens to. If he, I'll get him to listen to this, and when we get to that this part, he's Good. gonna be like, "Oh man." Good. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, we gotta get him on here. Yeah, for we sure. gotta get him on for sure. That's another one. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, he's. You know, he listens to a lot of good podcasts and thinks a lot about you know what is good content and what isn't. Yeah. Uh, okay. So he, you know, he like brings his a game when it becomes on the podcast right on man nice. we're, we're, it sounds like we're in the same boat there for sure yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. but have yeah. you guys had brendan on yet uh no we haven't had brendan on yet yeah we've okay. only had i think one full guest yeah slot we so you're kind of like our one of our first here yeah hey yeah misty i am uh, i am flattered yeah. yeah, setting the stage. Yeah, you got to set the stage, Charlie Westerman. So, okay, so I, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and catch you with a question that's a little bit out of left field here, Charlie. Am um, I coming out of left field? <laughs> <laughs> Hit me. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay, so um, we we were talking about this the other day. Um, Lamar and I were talking about how books in general end up tending to be like a little bit easier to be consumed as an audio book for like most people um, than to like be read as like a, a full like paperback book, you know, do, do, do you hear me? You feel me on that a little bit? Yeah, okay. I, I actually, um, and yeah, I have I have do not listen to a lot of audio books just because I listen to so many podcasts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. really have room for them, but I, my, my, um, my homies in my writing from my writing cohort in Denver here actually just like bought me a six month audible subscription. So I'm going to, I'm going to oh, try and start okay. that one. Okay. But anyways, um, but yeah, so I just wanted to preface that. So but but get yeah. back here. but you know, I, I'm going to try that too. So I, I, I appreciate you saying that, but the thing is I'm, I'm wondering in like the modern age, like as as a person who is an author yourself and is actually trying to actively do that, do you think that if someone were to release a book completely on audiobook 
and have no print version of that book whatsoever, not even on the internet in text, do you think that would affect their book sales or would it like improve their book sales just because it's only on audiobook? What like what are your kind of thoughts on that? Man, I don't know. I mean, didn't didn't Malcolm Gladwell kind of do that with his last book? Have you heard about that? No, I haven't. So he he released an audio like yeah his last book was an audio book and he had you know I I think it was the actual I can't remember if it was the actual like interview with people in the interviews or if he hired like voice actors mm-hmm. um you're kind of one of those two and then yeah I think just like I don't think it can be read huh. as like wow. the way he did it um I don't think it can be read so it's like I a... never like I heard him come on a on a podcast and talk about it. Um, but I never, I never did hear like how successful it was. Yeah. That's really but, interesting. I mean, it's, yeah, it's cheap. It's, I mean, release an audio book is cheap. You don't have to print it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and bind it and do all that stuff. Like once you have the recording, you just, but so, yeah, I don't know kind of what the, yeah. when you well, got down to brass tacks on the numbers, how that would all shake out, but. Well, what about you yourself? Are you going to do an audiobook version of your books, or are you going to like kind of keep it all on print? I mean, I would be, I would be pretty down to do an audio book. Yeah, if, yeah. yeah, like I, I think that would be. If I ever got it published, I'd be like, you know, I, I don't know if I could do it. Um, like I, I don't know if I have enough voice talent, <laughs> like acting talent to be able yeah. to read it in a compelling way well hey Although if you I, need you know, somebody i know a couple of guys so. yeah i've got a couple of super talented voice actors right here <laughs> yeah i can dial you guys up. right here in my but. garage in portland oregon <laughs> here we go <laughs> no, it'd be fun to do voice acting for a, a podcast or uh for yeah a for an audiobook i like, was doing i was reading um leaves of grass I mean, uh, Leaves, grapes of wrath. grapes of wrath, and uh, the the audible version of that. I don't know who they have voice acting, but it's really really well done. I think it's like one dude. He does all the voices of all the people in the book, and it's like it's spot on. They're they're that yeah. His ability to do all the different voices, like female and male, and old and young, and and everything, and like you can tell who's who he's who's talking like right away. Like he's able to be consistent about it too pretty impressive yeah there there's some of those like the right voice actor for the right book is like a totally it's interesting because it's a totally different experience like um you're just being told the story rather rather you know so it's it's more of a obviously more of an auditory experience but you right. also like I, I i also like to i think i like to just read the books too because i like to be able to see like you know how they're you know where how what their style is you know and like where they're using commas and where they're using periods and right and semicolons versus hyphens and all that you know like there's just something to to seeing the words on the page and i like to make little notes in them but like mm-hmm. i listened to the most when i listened to the most audiobooks is when i was in college and I would go to the college library before I'd like drive home for the summer, which I went to college in Washington State University. To drive home to Chugwater, Wyoming, where I grew up, was like a um, thousand fifty miles. So I I would do it in like fourteen hours, and yeah. um, I would get an audio book, download it, or like put it on my computer, then download it on my iPod. Then like you, you remember when you used to like transmit your ipod through the radio yeah. oh yeah yeah so i would like do that and then i'd listen to the listen to the auto ill book and one of them that i did was um listen to was lolita okay which is a very interesting book and jeremy irons um the guy who played scar in the lion king yeah um like played lolita on broadway and then he was the guy who did the audio book and you know so he's got that like deep british voice and yeah <laughs> he was like he was so good and it. it was like because he played the character of the main humbert humbert who was like the the protagonist or antagonist however you want to look at you know a guy who's in love with like a 12 year old <laughs> right um he played him on broadway so he like knew his character and like some of the 
some of his passages that he would read were just like uh, harrowing. Yeah. Hmm. But really brilliant and well done. Okay. Yeah. So check anyways, that one that's out. My, yeah. That's my Lolita Jeremy Irons tangent. But. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was, that was a good question, Man. though, Joe. Yeah, you know, we we thought of that one a little while ago. It's a uh, that was on episode one, I think. Cause, yeah, it's a, it's because you know it's just this weird transition in media, you know, like which is something that kind of like drew drove Lamar and I to podcast a little bit is because it's the only kind of like long form thing that's in any way popular at the moment, you know, like yeah. You know. Like people don't have patience for a YouTube video that's any longer than five minutes, but they'll listen to a podcast for three or four hours if fucking Joe Rogan's on it, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. Crazy. My, my, uh, my sister, you know, she's got, she's got a, a three and a five, a six, a six month year old. Yeah. He's six. Anyways. Um, and she, went to listen to my pod, you know, she's busy being a mom and stuff, went to listen to my podcast and saw that it was like two hours. <laughs> she yeah. texted me, she's like, hey, she's like, I was going to listen to your podcast, but I don't, but she's like, I listen, like my, I like podcasts that are 30 to 45 minutes and I read an article about how those, that's like the most popular length and I was like, yeah, she's like, so maybe you could think about paring it down and I was like, well, I was like, one of the reasons I like podcasts is because I like more long form, like yeah. hour to two hour to, like whatever. Well, did you tell her that maybe you think you can like listen to part of it and then listen to the other part later? You know, just yeah. Spotify yeah. Spotify already I, saved your spot. Looks like they yeah. already figured that yeah. out for you. No, I didn't. I I I thought about saying that, but I was sorry to ruin your vibe. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I don't fit your forty-five minute little perfect box that society tries to put me in. You can't put there's, me in a there's box. Part man. Of me, there's part of me that wishes I would have just like told nobody <laughs> that I was doing a podcast, <laughs> yeah, right. and then just like done it and put it out. And because you know, I, I have like I have um, I put this in. I put a little blurb about this in my my book. I've, I'm trying to finish up right now just about like um, I fantasize sometimes about just being able to be totally anonymous. Yeah. And like how that would change my writing when you don't have to, when you wouldn't have to think about like when there's no accountability. You know, how, yeah. When there's no accountability yeah. and like you could just totally throw your friends under the bus Yeah, and say whatever you wanted. And it would probably make for some pretty compelling writing. Yeah. But I also like, you know, I, and it's, uh, you have to learn how to not care what other people think in writing, but yeah. I do kind of, you know, I care about my personal relationships. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, nah, you don't want to relu- you don't want to ruin personal relationships over, you know, you just wanting to say some shit. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> and there's, there's probably a good like meter on that too, um, yeah. where, where it actually makes you think of like, do I really need to say this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. I'm happy you have that meter because I don't. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, it's, I'm pretty liberal with that meter. (laughs) Yeah, it just, when it goes, it goes. Yeah. I'll be, Um. (laughs) it'll be interesting to see my like parents' reaction to my second book compared to my first because they're two very different books. Yeah, so yeah, what what's kind of going on with that? Um give us a give us a quick synopsis. Like what was your what was your f- first book and how does that differ so much to your second book? Yeah, um so my first book it was essentially an uh I call it autobiographical fiction. Um mm-hmm. so I um kind of told I have a kind of a unique and I think interesting family story my biological father died when i was 14 months old of a brain tumor um he went to dartmouth he was and he was he was a really smart guy smarter than i am um but decided to become like a baptist 
minister. Um, and that took him from like, him and my mom were working in inner city Chicago, um, like mentoring and tutoring youth there. Um, and like, you know, in Cabrini Green, which was like, you know, the hood. Um, and then, but they really, um, they worked in Estes Park for a summer, for a couple summers at the YMCA there and really loved the West, ended up in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Um, soon after, yeah, my dad got a brain tumor and he died. My mom went to a Greek support group in Cheyenne and met a rancher from Chugwater, Wyoming, which is about 40 miles north of Cheyenne, whose wife had died of breast cancer. So my mom had me and my two older brothers, my, my, um, technically my stepfather, but I just call him like my, I just kind of have two fathers as yeah. far as I'm concerned. Um, he had two girls and we Brady bunched their families. Um, like a month after they got married a month after my third birthday. Did they all have hair um, of gold? What's that? Did they all have hair of gold? Hair of gold? Yeah. Like their mother, the youngest one in curls. Oh. I mean, my, yeah, my sisters, my sisters are blonde hair, blue eyes. Yeah. So, yeah. Pretty, so your family is the Brady pretty Bunch. Pretty flaxen. <laughs> Oh yeah. Oh, okay. My bad. I've so, never so actually you watched are. the Brady Bunch that much. So. Yeah, that went over I my head like too. I was like, oh, I didn't. <laughs> You've never heard that theme song. I never before? paid attention to the lyrics. They all had hair of gold, do, 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 like do. their mother, the youngest one in curls. Okay. Oh. But then yeah. one day when the lady met this fellow, and they knew that it was not more than a Man, hunch. I'm I, ashamed I guess though because I do love much. old. I do love old sitcoms. That's a good song. But I, I've never really watched the bunch. I never watched the sitcoms. I watched the movies from the 90s because that shit was hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> that was a good one. Yeah, those theme songs are pretty yeah, good. I, but but I anyway. Yeah, the movies too. But anyway, so, I, yeah, anyway, I sidetracked your story. Go have <laughs> Gold, go, go lob one up, and I just totally whipped that. No. <laughs> um, so, yeah, they got married. And so, anyways, my book is telling that story. Um, I think, um, but in a, I, I, and call it, I called it a novel so that I would have some liberty to make it more of a story mm -hmm. um, and like a novel and, and literary than, than the actual, you know, being totally tethered to the fact. So I changed the names of everybody in the book except for my biological father and my, me and my brothers mm -hmm. um, who are, I'm in it as like a, you know, one to three year old. Um, yeah. So my, yeah, my, my biological father was a pastor. He also loved like the Rolling Stones and, Woody Allen was his favorite director and he would drive down to Fort Collins, Colorado, like 45 minutes away from Cheyenne to like drink a few beers and smoke cigarettes <laughs> and uh, <laughs> write because he didn't want anybody like he didn't want to do it in Cheyenne where somebody from his congregation might see him oh. just being a human. Yeah. So anyways, he wasn't maybe your kind of typical like uh, American Baptist pastor in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Yeah. Um, and my, my mom is a woman of great faith and my stepdad, um, is too. And so was my, um, his, his first wife. So it, the, um, it's those four characters are the point of views and the shifts between the four of them. And then also I mentioned earlier, my uncle who was a quadriplegic is the fifth perspective and he is very much not a Christian and doesn't yeah. really care for that's um, funny. Faith or religion. So he was kind of the, um, um, you know, contrarian perspective. That's kind of um, crazy. Like the, the one who is like, you know, if, if you were really, lo really to look at it from a third person perspective, like the one of the story that's like closest to death is the one who believes the least in God. Yeah. Yeah. That is, I never quite thought of it that way. That's, but yeah. That's kind of fascinating. I don't know. That, that's just something I recognize from what you just said right there. But hmm. yeah, well, and he's still he got yeah he was in accident in 1973, and he's still he's still kicking it at 60, maybe 62 or three now. Fuck yeah, um, man! He's lived a cra crazy life, but it's also been a pretty like it's he's like persevered through a lot, but it's also just been been a pretty hard life so and yeah just being in pain a lot and he's like a he's a dude who would have like really appreciated the use of his body you know like yeah 
pretty active guy in his wheelchair, but mm-hmm. just loved to hunt and fish and kayak and yeah, you know, work. He he probably would have been like he's like brilliantly mechanically minded. He's like restored old Studebakers and stuff. Right on. Um, so, but anyway, so yeah, that was my first book, and so there was a lot of um, faith in it. Um, yeah, and like you know christian themes but there was also a, you know i was writing them to just be humans and so there was naughty language and you know things that that christian publishers find off-putting um, yeah. so none of them wanted to publish it but then for so, the secular publishing industry there's like too much faith stuff in it so it's kind of a bit of an orphan um, but i still think it's a good book and it's on the shelf and ready to be published whenever somebody uh Wants to, <laughs> yeah. wants to help me do that. Yeah. Oh, no, totally. I mean, <clears throat> that sounds like a weird kind of middle ground to play because, I mean, Charlie, I, would you consider yourself a, a, a person of faith? Yeah. No, I would still call myself a, a Christian. Um, yeah. I... Like what's the, what's your I mean, practice though? I mean, are you are are you serious about it? Are you doing some kind of like a like virtual worship service or whatever happens for for Christians on a Sunday these days? Is that what you do or what what's kind of your um, practice? I haven't I haven't done that. I did have like I had a church in college that I liked and mm-hmm. um, I have I, I went to Imago Day in Portland and really loved that church. Like I think they do a very good job of really applying what the gospel actually is um, yeah. to to their lives and like trying, I mean, the a lot of secular like non-profit um, organizations in Portland, they have really good relationships with them. And those would be people who probably wouldn't, wouldn't think super highly of religion and have good reasons not to. Um, yeah. But they're just, so any, and Rick, Rick McKinley is the head pastor there and is my favorite person I've ever heard preach. So, they do, you know, they put their podcasts on on line, or they put their sermons on on line that you can listen to. So I don't I don't attend it virtually, but I'll listen to, you know, on like Monday morning, I'll listen to the sermons while I'm walking walking Dorothy. Yeah, right on my dog. So yeah, Dorothy. Yeah, no, I, my um my parents, um, you know, they I didn't feel like I went to you know I grew up in small town Wyoming, going to a Baptist church. And, and then I went to Washington State University, which was a liberal arts university, you know, and it's the Northwest. And um, I took a Bible as literature class my first semester of college that was, you know, a secular view at the, uh, looking at the Bible. And um, like, I think every Christian should have to go up to the Northwest and actually be challenged to figure out, yeah, you know, why, why they believe what they believe. And um, well, like, but I, I never like, yeah. yeah. Well, no, go on, go on, Charlie. I never felt like my parents, um, even as I was going through that and questioning that, like, and they weren't perfect and our family wasn't perfect, but I didn't feel like I didn't go to college and have kind of all these questions come up and then just be like, my parents were total hypocrites. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they didn't like they, their faith really got them was the thing that got them through, you know, losing their spouses till they found each other. Um, mm-hmm. And like, you know, my, their churches were really, um, people, you know, like a church is supposed to be a, an authentic community of people trying to love each other and, and figure out how to live yeah. their best lives together. And, um, like their churches came through for them in a big way and that, that community was, was good. So, yeah. So I, I get, I get it why a lot of people that, you know, the American church, especially these days, I think doesn't do a very good job selling themselves or maybe, maybe they need to stop selling themselves and just, you know, we should, I shouldn't say they, we should just try and live it out more and um, try not to be such a social club and just meet people where they're at and love them instead of like making them feel judged. and Yeah. Well, and I think I feel like the thing I, I feel like the way that because I mean I was raised religious and I'm not a religious person now and that's just the way my life has gone. But yeah, you know, I mean, for me, I feel like when you look at church and you look at religion, that the way that you are looking at it is you actually be, end up becoming 
more of like what Christ's original gospel actually was because you know you're you're loving your neighbor you're not worrying about who they worship or what church they go to or what actually yeah. gives that individual meaning the only thing that you're actually worrying about is that that person is happy and that person is content in their day-to-day life because that's I mean at the end of the day that's that's all that really really matters you know I mean yeah yeah and I think if you if you do that and they want you know if they want to ask you about it that's fine like I'll I'll tell anybody who asks me but I'm not trying I'm not trying to like get to heaven and be like hey look how many people that I led to Christ (laughs) yeah I got like how many people I like duped into saying this prayer um I just think it's more nuanced than that and yeah and also like it's what happens when people die between between them and god like it's not i don't think it's our job to just like to to try and you know guess what that's going to (laughs) be yeah no exactly because there's literally no fucking way we could ever know like (laughs) There's no yeah, way sure. that any human we, being on earth could fathom such a thing. That's just not, we can, we can all yeah. have our guesses. And I, you know, I think there's, I think there's a pretty good argument for intelligent design for sure. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, it's like, it's, as a Christian, it's faith. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, a, it's, it's, it's faith against certainty. science and, and neither are perfect. <laughs> yeah. And you I know. think those, I think those two things can, can coexist and, yeah. Um, the creation story in the Bible can, you know, is, is beautiful. Like it's beautiful writing. It's beautiful storytelling. It's a lot more compelling um, and like mystical and awesome, like in literary than just like, you know, whatever the Wikipedia entry would be for like, you know, 4.6 billion years ago, blah, blah, blah. You yeah. know, <laughs> like it doesn't, yeah. but we don't have to, we don't have to take it literally. Like, um, but there's some there's some good stuff in there. Yeah, yeah. So, you think it, you feel like scientists should write some like beautiful literary story about the Big Bang theory? Yeah, that, I mean, Create I don't think there's anything wrong anything. with the with the technical parts of it. But yeah, I think uh, science, like all this stuff we learn about science, is like for me, that's like cool. God is, you know, and I'm a creative, like, and he's referred to as the creator a lot in the Bible. Like, yeah, I think that's yeah. cool that like I believe in God and like, so for me, that's like, yes, he's, he was super creative and he also likes story. So, yeah, you know, there's yeah. suffering and death and hardships in the world. Um, and people can do bad things because he gave us free will. And if he, if he didn't, um, and I'm sorry, I'm using the pronoun he, but I don't know. That's just, that's just kind of how I roll. Yeah. <laughs> if that offends anybody but if he if he didn't give us the choice then it's not love like you know yeah we're just robots and we have to like are just programmed to do you ever think do do you ever feel like maybe that's just some like bullshit excuse like god just isn't really trying that hard (laughs) like he's just like up in heaven like ah whatever fuck you figure it out for yourself do you ever feel (laughs) like god is maybe feeling like that a little bit or Gave it a college try. Kind of. Yeah, he's just giving it a college no, I try, don't. you know. It's, eh. I don't I don't think he's like indifferent or apathetic. Yeah. I I, I think he's got like a Well, I mean, do a, you, do you, you think know, he's human he's to got any a 30, extent? 000, he's got a 30,000 foot view on it a little more than we do to where he's like, you know, calm down, yeah. it'll be okay. <laughs> like this, <laughs> yeah, this no, is a totally. Life we're getting. But I mean, do you feel but, like do you feel like he's human to any extent, or or is God just uh, just like a, a completely all knowing being? Like, does he really know better than us, or, or or do you think that that maybe he's just as human as we are? Um, I I mean, I kind of think I think both. Yeah, you know that's where it gets real tricky with the yeah with no the it's Trinity you exactly. know the Trinity and right. and that like yeah, he had no. like. Christ came down so that he could know what it's like to just be one of us. Um, yeah. And like, yeah, how, how much he was like human and how much he was, um, yeah, like all knowing, all knowing and powerful. Yeah. That's a, that's a tough one to, to parse out. And, 
Yeah. You know, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit doesn't get enough love. He's pretty underrated. Yeah, exactly. Nobody <laughs> talks about the Holy Spirit spirit. Maybe that should be our other t shirt, Lamar. <laughs> yeah. Just a t shirt that says Holy Spirit. <laughs> Nothing else. Yeah. That's Holy yeah, Spirit. Yeah, the Holy Spirit's kinda he's kinda like the he's kinda like the hippie and mystic of the Trinity in my in my mind. That's kind of how I've always Yeah understood him like he's like he's out there and he's in you and he's just kind of like yeah <laughs> and he doesn't mind that he's like kind of the forgotten part of the whole yeah the whole triangle right but, yeah totally so anyways yeah that was my first book um and then my, <laughs> my second book is uh about like creative in portland um in north portland working at dive bars and and oh, hanging North out Portland. at dive bars and, and maybe you know doing some mushrooms and yeah so it's it is a bit of a, a bit of a different um setting and like kind of breed of characters maybe than my first book well do you have a uh kind of a release date for that book yet or release date yeah no i got it so uh, yeah i i trying to finish this revision and then like i said i gotta send it to the full manuscript to these two literary agents who have said they want to read the manuscript so if they read it and like it it'll offer me representation which would be good and i would i would probably take that offer um and then they would try and go to the publishers um like in you know big publishers and try and get a book deal for me dude fuck yeah okay well, so anyways, it's yeah. a process. I could self-publish it or go with the small press. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, like the big publishers can get you out there a lot more than you can get yourself out there. So you yeah. make a lot more money per book if you self-publish, but you're also kind of just a uh, a drop in the ocean. <laughs> yeah, you're you're kind of sh- you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot if you don't do some kind of good promotion behind it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Dude, so, I, anyways, honestly, Charlie, I feel like we should be doing, we should do a part two episode to this. Um, probably sooner than later. What do you think Lamar? Yeah, let's do another one because I feel like I, we need another follow up episode to this where we can like talk a little bit about much your, your new book because we, we super spent a whole bunch of time talking about your fucked up hands and shit. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, that's not your guys' fault. I am uh <laughs> once I get going I'm a gabber and then I like No, you you're got, fine. I go down. No, you're fine, but we really like, enjoyed talking hole. to you, man. Like uh, we we've really enjoyed this. So the, you can't leave the yeah, hands I, out. That was good content. That's yeah. fresh, fresh content. Fresh yeah. content. No, thanks thanks for <laughs> thanks for having me on. I I like like I said, I enjoyed it. I just got to be the guest and just blab and that. Yeah, man. And yeah. Oh yeah. Um I I'd, I'd be happy to come back on i'd be happy to have you guys on my podcast sometime yeah we can uh, we do go. a little we can do a little role reversal and I'll, we could be the I'll guest you, yeah i'll Here tie you go. guys up and and do stuff to you yeah instead of you know how we did it this time so yeah that'd be sweet <laughs> well cool charlie so, come on the journeyman anytime okay Game yeah plug okay and uh, if anybody wants to check it out subscribe rate review and all that stuff and well, yeah. We'll see if we can get to a uh, hundred listeners. We're gonna we're gonna post some stuff tonight. We're definitely gonna tag you on our on our Insta with our like four followers. We're probably gonna get right away. So, <laughs> <laughs> hell yeah, I'm I'm hitting subscribe. But so, yeah, so um, we we still have we, next time we talk to you, we got to talk about um, we got to talk about babes. If you got any babes in your life. I'm talking babes. We got to we got to talk about uh, ranch life when you were when you were living on the ranch, and we got to talk about uh, your your current book you're working on a little bit more in depth without giving too much away, obviously. Yeah. But that, um, that sounds like a good agenda. That, yeah. <laughs> you guys, before we got on, you guys were like, we're gonna we're gonna do like your hand, your book, and the ranch, <laughs> like 45 minutes to an hour, and it's like that seems doable. Well, we're Through hour, hour 17. We got to like yeah. half of it. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Exactly. We did like double the time that we thought we were going to do. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I, I enjoyed it. It was fun to, it all was right. Fun talking to you guys. I miss you guys. Yeah, I miss yeah. you too. We miss you too, buddy. All right.
Love right. you guys. Keep it real. All right, love you too. The, uh, city yeah. of Roses. Yeah. Love you too, All brother. Right. You Talk have a good night. Later. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.